In this video, we're going to go for a worked example of how to solve for the bang moment diagram for a frame structure using the slope deflection equations. We have a no sway frame A, B, C, D, so none of the delta terms in the slope deflection equations exist. We have a UDL on a beam section BC of 8 kilonewtons per meter, and we have columns A, B, and C, D of height four meters, the span of BC is six meters. So part of the procedure, first of all, is to identify which degree of freedoms we have in the system. So we have a look at the support conditions and we recognize straight away that the rotation at A, phi to A, must be equal to zero. The rotation phi to D must be equal to zero. So phi to A equals zero phi to d equals zero and we know it's a no sway frame so any deltas so relative displacements must be equal to zero but if we look at b and c as a result of the loading on the top half of the beam we would expect some sagging which becomes hogging towards the corner and then a rotation of c Likewise, a rotation at B of the joint to give us this kind of deformed structure. And we use that intuition about the deformed structure. We use qualitative analysis techniques to inform us of the expected bending moment diagram. So given the shape above, we're expecting tension at A on the inside and then tension at B on the outside of the column, giving us this kind of bending moment shape. Likewise, due to symmetry in DC, we would expect this kind of bending moment shape. And for the beam section BC, the moments will go around the corners. And then we will have the WL squared measured from this point here upon eight for the bending moment. Okay, so this is the bending moment we're expecting. We're gonna go straight into the next part of the procedure, which is to write down our fixed end moments. If we look at the columns A, B and C, D, we can see we have no external loading on the columns. So we can very quickly, so fixed, and moments, we can quickly write that F, E, M, A, B is equal to F, E, M, B, A, which equals to zero. And likewise for the right-hand side column, so F, E, M, C, D equals F, E, M, D, C, which is also equal to zero. We'll now examine the fixed end moments for the beam section and for a UDL on a fixed beam, the fixed end moments, so the UDL there, and we'll call the UDL W. The fixed end moments on the ends are at the left hand side, WL squared upon 12, and that is going in an anti clockwise direction, so negative, and in a clockwise direction at the right hand side, WL squared upon 12, and that is positive because in the slope deflection equations, we have to stick to it, the strict sign convention that on the ends of the members, that we are clockwise positive. At the joints or at the nodes, we're going to go anti-clockwise positive, but most of the time we, we can forget about that and just concentrate with what happens at the member ends. So from here, we can write down 
our remaining fixed end moments and that is that fixed end moment bc is equal to minus 24 kilonewton meters and fixed end moment cb so in this case b and c cb is equal to plus 24 kilonewton meters we're now going to write down our expressions for our member n moments that are from the slope deflection equations so member and moments and we're going to go very quickly through these but let's do the first one slow so m a b is equal to 2 e i divided by l a b all into 2 theta a plus theta b minus 3 delta upon l plus the fixed end moment a b and so going through from what we know we know that theta a equals zero so this term disappears we know we have no relative displacements in the structure so the delta upon l term disappears and we have no fixed end moment on this section of the frame so we can then tidy up and we're going to get 2 e i theta b divided by l a b and l a b equals 4 meters equals m a b going now to m b a M B A equals two E I divided by L A B into brackets two theta B plus theta A minus minus the three delta upon L plus the fixed end moment B A. And going through again, we know that the theta A disappears, the delta upon L disappears, and the fixed end moment B A disappears, and that the L A B was equal to 4. So we can finally tidy that up, and we get that M B A equals E I theta B. Moving now to M B C. So equals 2 E I upon L B C. We've got 2 theta B plus theta C minus the 3 delta upon L. And now plus the fixed end moment. And now that fixed end moment is plus minus 24 kilonewton meters. And just go through, so the LBC was 6 metres, theta B exists, theta C still exists, and the free delta upon L term disappears. So we can tidy this up, and we get, so we get 2 thirds E I theta B plus 1 third e i theta c minus 24 is equal to m b c moving to m c b so we have m c b is equal to 2 e I divided by L B C into two theta C plus 
beta b minus 3 delta upon l and now plus the fixed end moment which was plus 24 kilonewton meters and tidying this up multiplying the brackets out so we get so two thirds e i theta c plus one third e i theta b plus 24 is equal to the moment remember n moment m c b and now we go on to the column c d so we now have m c d equals 2 e i upon l c d into brackets 2 theta c plus theta d minus 3 delta upon l plus the fixed end moment and there's no loading so that fixed end moment is zero and remind ourselves again we have no delta term and we have no theta d term so we can tidy this up to mcd is equal to and remind ourselves also that lcd was four meters so mcd equals e i theta c and finally we have mdc which is equal to 2 e i divided by l c d into brackets 2 theta d plus theta c minus minus 3 delta upon l plus the fixed end moment which again is equal to naught in this case recognize that the theta d disappears the delta upon l disappears and there's no fixed end moment and multiplying the brackets out and tidying up we get that mdc equals one half e i theta c so now that we've established our member n moments or our equations for our member n moments at least in terms of the rotations we can look at the equilibrium of our joints and so we're going to have a look at joint b And for equilibrium, MBA plus MBC must be equal to zero. So we simply substitute the equations we've established for MBA and MBC. And we get EI theta B plus two thirds EI theta b plus one third e i theta c minus 24 is equal to zero likewise we examine the equilibrium of joint c we have m c b plus m c d is equal to zero Again, substituting our expressions for MCD and MCB, we have two thirds of EI theta C plus one third EI theta B plus 24 plus an EI theta C must be equal zero and we're going to look at these two equations above and collect all of the like terms so all the terms for in this case we're going to go with ei theta b and ei theta c 
collect them up and write in matrix four and then solve that matrix set of equations. So assemble and solve equations. So I'm going to take a little bit of space a big matrix ready to fill the gaps in in a moment and so my unknowns are e i theta b and e i theta c and my right hand sides are going to be plus 24 and minus 24 and our coefficients in this matrix, adding up the one thirds and two thirds in the equations above, are five upon three, one upon three, one upon three, and five upon three. Now we have a full set of matrix equations that we can use a graphics calculator or any linear equation solver like you get in MATLAB. And we solve the equations. And we get that e i theta b is equal to 18 and e i theta c is also equal to 18. And we could have seen from the loading and the symmetry of the problem that they would be equal and opposite. So actually theta c is, is going anti-clockwise, so it's a negative angle. And that's what comes out of the matrix set of equations too. And these would indeed have the units of kilonewton meters. Now that we have these values for EI theta B and EI theta C, we can substitute them back into our equations for the member N moments and get the real numerical values for the member N moments. So let's do that. Member end moments. And so this is just plug and chug substitutions, but let's go for the first one. So M A B is equal to two upon four E I theta B, which then remembering that E I theta B was a was eighteen. So we get 36 divided by 4, which equals 9 kilonewton meters. Likewise, we fill out just plug and chug. So MBA was equal to EI theta B, which is equal to 18 kilonewton meters. We move along to MBC. So this was two thirds EI theta B plus one third EI theta C minus 24. So substituting in for, so this was 18 and this is minus 18 we get so 12 minus 6 and minus 24 gives us a value of minus 18 kilonewton meters and remind ourselves that minus in this case means that the moment is going in an anti-clockwise direction Moving on to MCB, and we get plus 18 kilonewton meters. MCD is equal to minus 18 kilonewton meters. And finally, MDC is equal to minus nine kilonewton meters. 
And finally, armed with these member n values, we're ready to draw our bending moment diagram. And so we have our frame structure. And at A, we had tension on the inside. You don't want to worry about minus signs. So this was my, this was nine, this is 18. And we cross over, so we've got double curvature going on in this member. We have symmetry in CD. Again, we have nine and 18. The moments go around the corner. So these are both 18, 18. We draw a dotted line and we drop down by W L squared upon eight, which you can calculate will get you 36. So 18 minus 36 is minus 18. So we drop down to a value of 18 at the maximum sagging point. And at this point, our problem is completely solved.